On this episode of STV, we're back in the province of Quebec for our very first trail ride of the season. And we're here in the Laurentides region, just north of Montreal. Now, it's been a minute since I've been on these trails and I'm really looking forward to pulling the trigger. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. 509, fueling your passion. And by Polaris, think outside. For this adventure in the province of Quebec, we've come here to the Laurentians, north of Montreal, for a four-day tour throughout the region. And our ride starts here on Montagne du Diable, Devil's Mountain, where we finally run into winter for the first time this season. Devil's Mountain is one of this region's defining locations and at 783 meters or just over 2,500 feet above sea level, the mountain offers the best views of the region out over the Laurentian Highlands and the Basketong Reservoir. Its elevation also means the snow up here is always some of the best and the ice trees make this an extra special place to come and visit. A newer attraction at the top of the hill is a 21 meter or 70 foot tower that gets you above the trees for a 360 degree view. Now I'm not real comfortable with heights, but taking the stairs to the top while being blown around with the wind is worth the shaky knees and the pit in the stomach. Plus, we've been treated with a beautiful blue sky day making this lookout even better. No visit to the mountain is complete without some time spent in the relay. Open most days for a warm up, there's also a full service restaurant to get a meal while enjoying the view. Now if a meal or even a quick snack outside on one of the decks is on the to-do list, make sure you budget enough time for your ride to enjoy this spectacular setting. For our tour of the Laurentide region, we rode up the mountain from Mont Laurier, the main city centre for the area. As elevation increased, the conditions got better as well. Going back down though, as we descended back below the frosted tree line, we were reminded that this 2024 season of snowmobiling has been suffering from a lack of snow. It was clear the trails could use more of the white stuff and the clubs were struggling to maintain their typical high standards, but this area was open and we were riding which at this point in the winter is more than can be said for a lot of other areas. After the ride up and down Devil's Mountain, our day was taking us to the Provery Mikos, one of the members of the Woodrunner Trail System, which is like a system within a system here in the Laurentides. Developed by a group of lodge operators looking to work together to make a snowmobile trip to this region the absolute best it can be. To help explain the philosophy behind the Woodrunner Trails, we had a chat with Martin Gamache, the owner of the Rabaska Lodge, one of the members of the Woodrunner Group, to tell us more about it. The Woodrunner Trail system start like 25 years ago. It's a bunch of uh, lodging put ourselves together to uh, offer for tourism uh, an opportunity to ride snowmobile around in our area. So we said if we make a circuit together, it's easy to sell to these people and we control the product because we're our owner part of the system, the Woodrunner Trail, and we help each other with talk to, for example, if you came here at the Rabaska and the, your next destination is the Mikos, we know exactly you start in the morning after breakfast, and if you don't hit the Mikos for four o'clock in the afternoon, we know you have a problem, and we can talk together, and we work together on Earth. So we said it's gonna be secure to offer that circuit to these people. So it's begin like that. 
And 25 years later, we put some sign every five mile approximately in the trail. So when you ride, you don't need to look your GPS and to be sure you're in the right way, you just see the sign and know exactly where you are in the trail. Rentals are also available within this region as well, with locations at some of the Proveries or in major centers like Mont Laurier, and the fleet of sleds available in this region range from the easy to ride lower horsepower sleds to the more powerful sleds that experienced riders will enjoy. What is nice with this area is uh, we have a big network of trail that is super well indicated. That means we don't need to do guided tours necessarily. Somebody can just come up to us, rent a, a sled, and then go by themselves on the trail. It's super well indicated. You get everything live on the, uh, the map, the interactive map of the FCMQ, the Fédération des Clubs de Motoneige du Québec. So uh, even a first timer who's not very used to snowmobile, he can come up here at the rental center. We explain to him uh, how it works. We give a little course, uh, give directions and then anybody is good to go by themselves on the trail. And you can also, if you want, be a big group, you can maybe hire a guide, so have a guided tour that's possible as well. With a quality rental fleet available, there is no excuse not to come to this area and ride. Now we obviously came with our own sleds and we're enjoying what was our first real ride day of the season, packing a lot into the day, leaving Mont Laurier in the morning, trekking to the top of Devil's Mountain for the views and lunch, and then back on the Woodrunner trails heading to the Proverimikos, our destination for the evening. After being treated to a feast of a meal, by nighttime, the day ended abruptly for some of us. So, coming up after the break, day two of our ride begins. This segment is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. It's day two of our Laurentian adventure and we're waking up here at Provery Mikos, an unexpected extravagance here deep in the woods. <music> the Provery Mikos is laid out with a central main lodge with dining and great room where guests can gather and relax in an inviting environment. Trust me, this place is worth it for the meal alone. Oh, 100%. The food's always top notch. Here you can, you're getting fresh fish, you're getting duck. It's, it's almost like it's homemade. It's not like going to your local diner at home. This is homemade food here. It's fantastic. They cater to us. The Provery Miko set a pretty high bar for the first night on our ride, but our tour had us here for only one night. So, you know, as a souvenir of our time here in Mikos, a couple of us decided that we needed to go home with some fur. And I don't care how good your high-tech gloves are, it's not gonna keep your hands as warm as when they're slid inside a pair of these things. So nice. Now all of us have stories of old timers we knew that had mitts like these. I've experienced the insulating properties of this type of mitten when I was up in Churchill, Manitoba, and wanted a pair ever since. Now this isn't something you see every day or have the opportunity to buy just anywhere. Now before we leave, Jeremy, one of the fellows on the ride with us, and Brent, the camera guy for STV, decided they needed an eye opener. So they're inside right now in the sauna getting some heat in their skin before they sashay out here for a cold dip in the lake. That's nuts. I mean, I would do it, but somebody's got to hold the camera. Oh, it's cold out here. 
The Provery Mikos cuts a hole in the ice allowing access to the lake water, but also sinks in a wood box with a set of stairs to make this dunk safe and easy for guests who want to take the plunge. It's chilly already. Yeah, it sucks already. I would never do that. Like, just jump in. Just you can't. full cannonball. You can't do full cannonball? Oh, it doesn't look cold at all. I still can't touch the bottom. Don't drop the camera, otherwise you're gonna go fishing. That, that looks like the face of somebody who's having a great time. I'm, climb, I'm climatizing. All right, I'm just, just go right into the net. I'm not. No, I can't no, feel you can't get out yet. No, no bottom. Woo. You can't get out yet. No, I'm out. Woo! Oh, watch the slip. No. <laughs> wow. Oh. Bottom. Oh, go to it. But it's no. Like it's way over my head. Can one of you guys do a snow angel? I'll move the camera if you can do a snow angel. <laughs> not a chance. Woo. Woo. I'll clean up after those guys, but there is no way that I would do that. That you couldn't pay me enough to do that. Uh-uh, I'm not going into the lake. I don't care how warm the Suna is. I'm not getting in it. And I'm not gonna get in the lake, jump in there, get pneumonia. I don't care what it, how, how good of a hangover cure it is, I'm not doing it. With our spirits rejuvenated, some more than others after that dip in the lake, we're about to hit the trail to Nottawassee. That's our next destination for tonight, bidding à la prochaine to the Porverie Mikos because definitely one day for sure, I'm coming back here. Leaving the experience of Mikos behind us, it was easy following the signage set up by the Woodrunner system to our next overnight location at the Porverie Nottawassee. And on day two of our ride, Snow and trail conditions were only getting better as we traveled deeper into the Laurentians. Start to finish, our day wasn't about piling on huge mileage. Our day would end up being right around 100 kilometers or so. But with the trails within the system here, you can extend your riding distances to whatever suits you or in your group. But I'd caution not to overdo it on your day-to-day -day distances. If the Provery Mikos is any indication, you'll want to take advantage of a little extra time spent enjoying the places you'll be discovering along the way. This segment is brought to you by Ford. The Nottawassee is another Proverie style destination on our trip here to Quebec. Now in English, Proverie roughly translates into Wilderness Lodge. And even though we're deep in the woods here in the wilderness at the Nottawassee, there is nothing about this place that makes you feel like you've got to be roughing it. On a sled trip, great trails are important, but some would say where you're staying, your accommodations are even more importanter than a great ride. And so far on this trip to Quebec, all the places we've been staying at have been top notch. And I've thought of you, the traveling snowmobiler, when designing their cabins and cottages. I mean, come on inside, let me show you what I'm talking about. It's all about the details that make a great place to stay as a snowmobiler even better. And it starts here at the Nottawassee as soon as you walk in the cabin door with plenty of hooks to hang your stuff on to let it dry out. I mean, there's 17 hooks all told in this cabin. And then on the other side of the door, you've got cubby holes to be able to put your helmets, get them away so they're not on the floor and help them dry out. Then speaking of drying out, over here in the living area, you've got a great wood stove that fires off all kinds of heat. You've got a couple of spaces here to be able to sit down and relax. I mean, don't worry, your cabin doesn't come with these two Sam Squanches. They're the ones that are traveling with us, so they're going to be leaving with us too, so you won't have to deal with their stink. But I mean, just a great place to hang out at the end of a long day's ride. And then after that, you got a pair of bedrooms that are 
twin. They're exactly the same on both sides. Come on in here, let me show you. I mean, come on in, check this out. I mean, it starts again, more cubby holes for more helmets if you have it, hook here for gear and plenty of space to store down here. And then two double beds where two mates can sleep in their individual beds. Uh, bathrooms are next, there's two of those as well. Let me show you this, because it's a pretty cool idea too. You don't want one here. Okay, there's, there's another one. The second bathroom is a great idea for when one of your riding buddies has destroyed the other one. You got the second bathroom, you can come in and do whatever you gotta do. Plus, with having two bathrooms, that means if you're traveling, say with four guys, you can get all your morning stuff, your routine done quickly, and get back out on the trails. And the second bathroom in a small cabin like this is just brilliant. And then on this end of the great room, you got a full kitchen, fridge, stove, everything you need, and an excellent table to be able to play a game of cards. And what are you guys eating? You eating nuts? I told you you'd love my nuts. Anyways, this is an absolutely awesome place to hang out. But now the tour is over and it's time to hit the trails. Today's destination would be the Rabaska Lodge for our last overnight stay on this adventure. And again, the trails were getting better and better by the day and we were all enjoying the ride through the twists, turns and elevation changes of the system. With a little planning ahead, we had lunch packed for a trailside snack at Windigo Falls. So if you're riding in the area, Windigo Falls is another must stop. If you're lucky, you can get here on a nice day and you can take the time and walk around the falls. It's definitely worth the 20 minutes, half an hour it's gonna take to check these things out. The temperatures were perfect for spending some time outside, enjoying our snack, and then taking a short hike to the falls where there's footpaths to take you up and down each side of the creek above the falls where there's platforms to enjoy the different views. There's also a small bridge that crosses from side to side, which is another great place for a photo op. For colder days, there's a warm-up shack on site to take the chill off, but we were able to hang around outside where we came across another group of riders enjoying the trails of the Laurentians and taking a stop at the falls. So it took us eight or nine hours to get here from home and the snowmobiling was well worth the drive, 100%. The trail conditions are good considering the season it is. Um, lots of restaurants, the lookouts for sure at Devil's Mountain are beautiful. Um, warm up shacks, which are always nice. And just the scenery is beautiful. Yeah, see you later. See you, Jeff. Jeff's a good guy. Good people. From the falls, our next and last destination is the Rabaska Lodge. A relatively short ride from the falls, the feeling was a little bittersweet. I was looking forward to another great stopover, but it also meant our time in the Laurentians was coming to an end. This segment is brought to you by Kimpex. Today is our last day in the Laurentides region of Quebec, and if I was to come up with one word to describe this trip, it would be welcoming. At each location and along the trail, we met people who are passionate about snowmobiles, or the experience of snowmobiling, or making sure people are having a good time snowmobiling. Martin here at the Rabaska Lodge is one of the operators up here and wants his guests to feel at home and make memories they can take with them. When people choose us, we're very happy because you can go everywhere in Quebec. A lot of lodging exists for snowmobiler. But here we try to make the difference. So we go at every table every night to talk to people to be sure the whole experience is fantastic. So we're part of that and the client feel like home because every time they come and they re-come every year, it's like coming back home. It's like our private cabin, our private spa, our private trail because we have private trail too. So I think the whole experience, it's based on talk to each other, 
be sure people are happy to be here because they choose us. So we have the privilege of that. So we just want everybody happy. And if they're happy, we're good too. <laughs> they're very good hosts. They, they make people feel like they're important to them. It's those little things when we're here that are special, like I smoke cigars, not a lot, but some, and we do it with our friends. And Martin, as busy as he is, took the time last night. We went in the garage, man cave, and we uh, shared a cigar and bourbon together. And it was a great talk. We, we talk about his life up here, my life at home, and, and what we like here. And it's something you do with friends. It's like home. I completely agree with Joe that the Robasca, along with all the other places we've stayed at, have all been so welcoming right from arrival to departure. I just wish we could spend more time than just a single evening at each establishment enjoying their unique hospitality, chatting with other riders or groups, and experiencing the food. Ho oh, ho, oh, the food. This trip has been amazing, even though the snow conditions have been less than ideal, which seems to be the theme of the season. So I wanted to send a thank you to all the club members and volunteers who are working so hard to bring a snowmobiling season together where Mother Nature just does not want to cooperate with snow and cold weather. But this trip, with these conditions, have reminded me that snowmobiling is way more than just a perfectly groomed trail. It's about the experience of it all. It's about the friends you bring with you and the new friends you meet along the way. We'll see you next time on Snowmobiler Television. Closed captioning is brought to you by Scott Snowmobile Goggles. STV has been brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Wherever life takes you, Best Western is there. Ultimax Belts, performance driven, performance proven and by Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 58 years. Hi, thanks for watching Snowmobiler Television. If you enjoy the show, please hit that like and subscribe button.